Philadelphia. What's up y'all, Matt Airy here, and I wanna to talk to you about fishing ditches in the wintertime with an underspan. And this is uh, obviously my personal favorite. It's a brand new underspan we've got out with Pulse Fish Lures. It is a, uh, it's a signature bait of mine, but it's called the Spinning PJ. Now let's talk about looking for those ditches and things like that. A lot of, way to, lot of ways to find ditches, especially, and let's talk about the, the Heron Lakes where it really, really plays. Um, back in uh, the early classic on Lake Hartwell where Casey Ashley won doing this exact type thing. Uh, ditches you can find by looking at your maps, well, there's a feeder creek that comes in the back of a pocket or a cove somewhere, there's going to be a natural ditch or a natural funnel that comes out of there. Now, lakes like Hartwell, Lanier, places like that that have a lot of really defined ditches running up in the guts of these pockets. You hear guys talk about fishing guts a lot, and that's what they're talking about is fishing these little creek channel ditches that run up in, the, in these pockets and bays. Um, a lot of those lakes have timber in them, and there'll be a timber line that usually stops somewhere when you're running up in those ditches, anywhere in that 30 to 40 foot range, roughly. Now, what happens is first thing in the morning, those fish are typically in the back of those ditches and they're actively feeding on those heron. As the day progresses and the sun gets higher, those heron start to migrate out of that ditch. So you're going to start first thing in the morning all the way in the back of some of those ditches, fishing this thing super slow. You're going to fish it the same way throughout the day in the wintertime in my opinion. You're going to fish it super slow. You're going to try to stay in contact with the bottom. You're going to engage that reel. You're going to wind it slow. You're going to slow it down. You're going to try to stay in touch with that bottom and you'll get a lot of bites just finessing this little underspin through those ditches. If you look at the distance and the angle of this wire coming off the head. That's something that we tested quite a bit because what I wanted in the underspin is from the time that I started my retrieve on the end of my cast, whether it was slow or fast, all the way through the retrieve, I wanted that blade to turn with a lot of ease. I wanted it to turn immediately as soon as I engaged the reel. And that's what this does, the separation between the blade the swivel in the head with that little arm, that's what it does. It allows it to run true all the way through your retrieve. Um, there again, first thing in the morning, you're starting in the back of them. As the day progresses, you might have to move out further. I've fished this thing anywhere from three foot all the way out to 40 feet deep. Um, I'll adjust my weights. I'll start with the three eighths in the morning for fishing the shallower conditions, and I'll go to the five eighths in the afternoons when I'm fishing a little bit deeper. A three all light wire Gamagatsu hook, that light wire hook is extremely important to me when fishing the underspin. And if I, I'm gonna pull this off, this soft plastic trailer we've got on there. I'm going to pull it off just to show you. But if you look at the keeper, it's got the collar like our Pulse jig uh, or our Pulse swim bait heads have, but we also added an extra little keeper wire there too. So when you put these soft plastics on there, the tearing, the tearing point on this bait is actually going to be a little bit further down when you go to tearing baits up. The bait will last a little bit longer and of course it keeps your baits securely fastened up on the head. Um, soft plastic trailers, I keep it pretty simple. Um, I just use a lot of split tails, something that doesn't have a whole lot of action. Every once in a while I might go to a paddle tail swim bait style uh, soft, bait, uh, soft plastic uh, just to give it a little bit more action if I feel like I need to. But typically in the wintertime, I'm fishing this thing extremely slow. I'm fishing it on the bottom and I'm, uh, I'm just trying to, trying to force feed those fish a little bitty old offering that resembles those blueback heron that they're feeding on so actively. Um, but there again, I, I hope those tips help you. Looking on your maps and things like that to try to find ditches, you can actually ride around the lake um, and you can see some on the main channel that might come off of an island or something like that. You'll see a transition in the bank and uh, we might actually do a whole separate video on that because I could talk about that for days. But as far as finding those ditches in those pockets, coves and creeks, um, you're just going to look for those uh, look look for those things on your map and you'll see the creek channels that run out of the back of those pockets and those are some of the better ones because they're a little bit more defined and it gives those it gives those bass a place to actually herd those heron into, trap them and, and, uh, and ambush them like that and feed on them a little bit more effectively. So uh, um, hope those tips help you catch a few more fish on the underspin throughout the winter months when it gets super cold. I've caught fish on this thing when the water's down there in the 40 degree mark and I've caught them all the way up all the way until they spawn. So so uh, a really good versatile bait, a great technique, especially on this Heron Lakes throughout the winter months. Uh, hope that helps you guys.